Yeah. All right, now welcome to the first PE session of the semester. Uh, we have uh, Michelle and Sonal. This is actually the second presentation of three. So the first one that are part of the PE at the end of last semester. Then the next session is about a month's time. Um, student. A little reminder this afternoon there's a current in session. Um, if you haven't signed up and would like to come there in this room, um, in the room, so feel free to stop by and do that after the one o'clock. All right. Um, so let's give them a hand. And welcome. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, at the end of the previous session, we uh, gave at the end of last semester, we sent you a short list of possible uh, topics for future workshops. And most of you responded, and most of you actually voted for the effective use of campus and community resources, which is the topic of today's session. And the reason this topic was on that short list that we shared with you is that research indicates that first year students who are who feel connected to campus and to the local community tend to be more engaged and to and more academically successful. So today we're going to explore together uh, possible ways of capitalizing on AUC and the larger community resources in order to create more engaging uh, environments for uh, our students. And we're assuming that most of you have uh, already used at least one or two resources, AUC or community resources. So would you like please to uh, name some of the resources you have used in the past, just name them. The sports center. Uh, library. Sports center. Sports center. Library. Yes. The gardens. Mm -hmm. What else? Writing center. Yes. Writing center. The photocopier. The photocopier. That's the most important resource. I tend to take the to PBA to a film screening room for a proper movie. CLT. A new app. New app. New app. Did anybody have a Okay, so we just. Producer? Not yet, but that's a wonderful resource. Yeah, and that's what they're calling. That's what they're calling in the career center, which is much better than in the past. So I'm talking about the caps still for a little bit. What is it? Is it is the career center, the former uh, center for advisement and placement services. Job for resumes, uh, job for data, career news. Very good. Yeah, I sent students there. Where is it? Look, hey, come on. Other instructors yes. come in Specialists. and talk. That's wonderful. Yes. So I, you, you were already utilizing campus and community resources, and we assumed that and assumed correctly. And I think intuitively you, you feel that if we utilize resources outside of the classroom, we really are making a better, uh, a more effective, we should say, learning environment for the students. So we wanted to present even more reasons for you to utilize the resources from the research. One, of course, as Sinat had mentioned, is that studies have shown that first-year students uh, are certainly more engaged with learning, and also they have more retention when uh, resources outside of the classroom uh, are utilized. But also, uh, it engages, uh, integra encourages integrated learning, which means students are more readily able to synthesize material and skills across courses, and it also appeals to different learning styles. Okay? Another reason is it makes learning uh, more meaningful because they're able to connect what they're learning to the real, real world, uh, more readily. Also, especially in CDL and service learning courses, it creates more civic engagement and a greater sense of community, both with AUC and outside of AUC. And also, research shows that it encourages... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> encourages more student success. Uh, so they found that students holistically were more successful uh, whenever campus and community resources were utilized to create those learning experiences. And for us as instructors, as we mentioned in the last PD session, it reflects that we are um, uh, using practices that are for a learning institute instead of 
a teaching institute, so we're encouraging student learning rather than focusing on ourselves as a sage on the stage in the classroom. So taking that learning experience outside the classroom. Okay, when I asked you a while ago what resources you used, you mentioned, you mentioned the library, and of course the librarians, if you remember, we had a librarian in a session last semester, and she shared with us some very useful uh, services that they could offer us and our students. The Writing Center, of course. And, but there are other resources that maybe we don't normally think of. For example, the students' publications. I was surprised myself when preparing for the session and I searched on the website and I was surprised at the large number of uh, students' publications and AUC publications. Um, public lectures, provost lectures, debates. Last semester we had a large number of debates. Uh, all of them were related to politics uh, for obvious reasons last semester. And, uh, that past music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Basim Yusuf and uh, uh, Neg, uh, what's his name? Uh, Neg, uh, Neg something. <laughs> and art exhibitions mm -hmm. and photography exhibitions are another resource we could use. Eureka. Ayo. Mm -hmm. Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> Or simply use the space, and I'm glad that some of you mentioned that they're already using the space. I haven't so far. And those of you who participated in FYE, how many people participated in FYE okay. this semester? Okay, there was a, 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 an interesting addition, which is an unusual or a campus tour uh, guided by Richard Hoth, and we enjoyed it very much, and the students also enjoyed it which is uh, like exploring flora and fauna on campus. Or simply the students, clubs and organizations. And again, Michelle will show you a, a list of uh, the available uh, ones. Okay. But th this is not an exhaustive list of resources. Could you think, can you think of other resources that I didn't mention? Uh, yes, counseling center, joking apart. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also DARE, the, the, the people who do statistics and, and surveys, and they're yes. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have the computer labs. These are like the obvious ones we use them all the time. CDL office, you act, CLT, Office of Student Services, and DARE. Um, So, I mean, there are a few options here. Some of them you used before, some of them perhaps not. And you might want to learn a little bit more about these. So, you might think, where can I go to find more information? Yes? You had something on the list. Can you add undergraduate research program? <laughs> we have it in the next slide. Okay. Okay. Undergraduate research, do we not have that? That's your That's your That's just the okay. conference. It's, it's part of, program. yes. Hold yes. on. Yes. Your, your part is coming, I promise. You've talked to us about that. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to navigate, navigate it? You sure? All right. So when, when I, we were talking about this subject about, okay, where can we learn more about what's going on, the first thing we thought is you guys. And that's why this is not really a presentation, it's more of a workshop so we can share ideas. Our colleagues are one of our best resources because so many of them are involved. <laughs> yes, should I move so you can see your pictures? Yes. Uh, so many of them are involved in very diverse things, and by talking to our colleagues, uh, we really do learn where to go uh, to get certain things done. Uh, I know Amani, you may all of you know, she's involved in CDL and undergraduate research now, and we invited her to say just a word or two about it. Okay, about CDL. And about maybe the undergraduate research as well. Well, the computer-based learning program started off as a program in 2008 doing uh, community-based learning in their classes long, long before that. I remember when I first heard of it, there were faculty on campus who had been doing it for more than 20 years, maybe not using the term for it, but doing it all the same. And uh, we selected the term community-based learning on campus so that it would, comp it would encompass varieties of learning uh, methods that involve the community in some way. 
then as we practiced it, most of what the faculty were doing was really what's known in the literature as service learning. And that's a methodology where you look at your course learning outcomes and you select an activity that partners with a community organization for the purposes of enhancing your own classroom learning by delivering a service to the community. So it's really a partnership. We get together at the beginning of the semester, we talk about their priorities and their needs, we talk about our priorities and our learning needs, and we find an intersection, we find something where the two partners are learning equally, okay? Uh, if faculty members or students select an activity that is really a lot of service for the community, but it does not enhance their course learning, their specific course learning outcomes, that's not service learning, and that's not what we do. Okay, so they can't be taking a chemistry <coughs> class and go off to the community to teach students to paint or to write. That's not what chemistry's learning involves. It has to reinforce the outcome in some way. It's a method, it's a teaching method. So you, by the end of the semester, the students will have, have to have learned those uh, learning outcomes. And they're just doing it through an activity that involves service to the community so that the course output makes sense to somebody. Somebody's going to make use of it. And also it makes sense to the students because they're not, I mean, one of my students wrote on uh, evaluation once, that I was so happy to know that my work is not going into the faculty members' recycling bin. Okay, that actually, if it, this is work for real, somebody's going to use it. But in the end, if they're required to do research, then their service is in the form of research. If they're required to argue, then their service is in the form of some kind of persuasion, some kind of argument. Whatever the service is has to align with the course learning. So that was CBL, and it's grown over the years. Uh, there's a whole department that helps the faculty members partner with a, a community institution or community organization that best fits the learning, best fits the student learning. That's not an easy thing. That's why the campus resource, which is the CBL office, is important. And I'm saying it's not an easy thing because there are so many organizations out there that many cannot accommodate students. You know? They have needs, they have, they, you know, they want your service, they want your money even, okay? But they don't have the space or the language ability or, you know, the environment that would really accommodate student learning. And in the end, it's our students that we prioritize as faculty. It's not the service, we're not, we're not a development program, or a teaching program, a learning program, okay? So we need to select organizations that will support student learning and at the same time make good use of the student product. So the CBL office is wonderful in that respect. I was really surprised too, we're going to show you the website in just a moment, uh, that there are so many organizations that have already had a partnership through the CBL office that you can access and look at and kind of use that to influence whatever plans you might have. Um, Nora Jones couldn't be with us this morning, but she's another one of our colleagues. You probably know she's very willing to share anytime she's involved in something new. Just last week she was telling me about how UAC has created some recording sound system where she's able to record uh, her voice reading an essay, and she has put that into the publication of the Red Herring. Formerly known as Red Herring, sorry. But, but she's another one of our examples of how colleagues are doing so many things that we can talk to them and find out how to get more involved in utilizing those kind of resources. Also, the websites, um, there's one for student activities, you probably saw this if you were in FYE, the kind of list of all the clubs and organizations and associations that students can, can get involved with. If you put the cursor over, um, it, it gives you a description of what that club organization is about. It even has contact information. So you can certainly utilize that to get your students involved more in, in these groups and, and, and find out opportunities for them to do things outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. Also, the yes, the search engine as well. They're organized by category. How many? There's like five hundred. Hundreds, yeah, hundreds, hundreds <laughs> listed there. Also, the CBL site. I'm going to show them how to get there. Okay, let's go back there. If you go to the CBL site, 
Yeah, it has information. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, it, it has links for resources. One is the community partners, if you link on that, so this one. It, it has a search, searchable database there that you can look either by organization or by sector. And this is what, what I mean about partnerships that have already been established. What's yes. and beans? What's there's too many of them, you know, but, but you can search by second. You can search, yeah. Some of these, of course, uh, the information needs to be updated. So mm -hmm. check and when we say a partnership, you're reading something that has worked for a long time with the AC, okay, on multiple uh, projects. The others, I mean, it's a long, long list, but some of them have only been used once by class or one spy student who spent some service hours there. So these are not really partnerships, but they could be. They could be developed as partnerships. So if you find something you're interested in, definitely contact the state office, yes. and you can find out if it's something that's already been established or something that you can work with. But the resources are there. Also, of course, you know the events calendars and university publications. We have links to these sites as well. Um, where you can find out what's going on on campus if you don't get the emails that they send to you, but also the support offices. I guess we should put undergraduate research here, sorry. Support offices, UAC, CLT, some of you mentioned that, Office of Student Services, and undergraduate research also. So you have these locations you can go to. If you've got a great idea and you need some help to, to bring it to fruition, you can go and work with some of the people at these offices. So now you know where to go. Again, this is not a presentation, it's a workshop. So we're going to ask you guys to do a little uh, activity here. What we want you to do, just in your little circle groups, if you could think about an outcome, a course outcome, for one of your courses, uh, and look at one of these activities or events that are taking place this semester or next. Think about how you could create an assignment or an activity that would kind of connect or reinforce that particular outcome, utilizing one of these resources. Just talk about it in your groups, just for a few minutes. See if you can come up with some new ideas, or maybe something you've done in the past, and then we can share those ideas with some of the colleagues here. Thank you. 
involved in Community Day, which is coming up in March 4th, right? Which is supposed to be, tell us a little bit. Drawing all the community together to hopefully establish a better sense of community among all of our faculty, staff, faculty, students, everybody. They will have fun activities, entertainment, food, music. It's March 4th, uh, Tuesday, March 4th. 
uh, of new today. So one of the parts of the, part of the plan to better utilize our campus and also to try to help not only freshmen but all the students feel a better sense of community out here because there's it's been addressed uh, the problem of moving out here, uh, the challenge of you know everybody coming so far away from all over parts of the city and being so far out from the, the central part of the city, people feel like they haven't established, they, they don't feel a um, connection, there's not a, an identity. So this is one of the goals, one of the, the programs they plan or plan to hopefully get people to feel at home here. And I guess it's family. Who's they? I'm just curious where this initiative comes from. Uh, it comes uh, from, well, Lisa Anderson has I was just been pushing. Say, I, I know she's behind. She's been pushing uh, heavily for the community day specifically, but there's also uh, a committee that has many task, for, ta task forces that um, different ones are focusing on different things like sustainability, uh, various task forces. And they're under various deans. Like we have, we have one task force that, uh, committee that I'm on is uh, with the dean of us, uh, Nate. So this is specifically our task force, specifically trying to figure out how to encourage students to use the campus more, like what you're talking about now. Why are students, many students, uh, wanting to get off campus so soon when they finish classes or whatever activities they have? Why do they want to leave? Why do they want to just stay and hang out? Uh, so we've explored, you know, some of those reasons. Some are just the fact that it's so far away that people are anxious to start that, that bus ride or car ride home. Um, when you were downtown, you were centrally located. It's very easy to just get back, get in. So it was well, different. Know, easier, easier, <laughs> easier, easier, comparatively. But there was more going on around the universe. Yeah, yeah so there's a lot. Part of the sort of Speaking of building campus sphere, what would happen with that mascot thing? They're going to announce that on Community Day. Oh, okay. They're going to announce the winner of the mascot, uh, the contest, whatever, for choosing a mascot, will be announced on Community Day. Are they really looking for anybody to help with the university gear, t-shirts, and because we're really, if you compare what we offer in terms of identity to um, another university, I can't buy Christmas presents for my family. Nothing. I know that's that. That's, 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 that's a good idea. Well, well I wonder, but there is that. There is that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. terrible yeah. product. Well, I wear uh, other university products. Yeah. 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 There was a very low selection. It's easy to fix, and I'd be happy to help. And they happy. Look at FYE. How wonderful! Every every semester, FYE has these wonderful jerseys. Or they have these wonderful yeah. jackets. Yeah. We need to have one mini university. It's like a real university. Class yeah. rings. Yes. And, you know, we should brand ourselves. That's the only way to do this. Yes. Uh, Michelle, you want to share one of the ways I'm thinking yes. of using one of these resources? It's still, you know, a uh, very, uh, you know, I haven't worked the idea yet. But I'm thinking of making my students uh, attend the International Day because there's a lot of argument there. Each country or group are somehow advocating an argument regarding their culture. And so what I want my students to do is to work in groups and I will assign a, a number of countries and I will have them analyze who the audience is and what rhetoric it is, is each group using and why, whether they, they have to evaluate it, whether they think it was a, the right rhetoric appeal for the right audience or not. Yeah. <laughs> Every spring, um, I usually ask if I have a research writing course, I ask my students to attend at least the keynote and one other presentation at Eureka. And I have them write up a, a critical response to, to try to see what, okay, what kind of research was presented, what's the context, what was the, the, the exigency there, uh, what kind of methodology was there, and so that they, they kind of demonstrate that they, they kind of understand how research happens, and, and through the presentation, they can kind of pick out elements of, of the research process in that presentation. And he, you know, they're a little bit, well for my purpose, they're a little bit young to participate in Eureka if, if, if in that semester we have a research writing, but if I have a research course the previous semester, sometimes if you're still in contact with your students, you can encourage them to participate, to, to enroll and present. Yes. Uh, so we're hoping that this year, we haven't advertised it yet, but we 
sure that we would have a poster session for first years, that they you know they demonstrate their research on first years. So they don't have to give the presentation, but they would be a walking audience and they would just go through all the different posters. That's a wonderful idea. Have a chance to you could have more people participating as well. Oh, great. <laughs> So would we, have some, like, would we have something like a workshop though, or like, you know, for, for how to create these uh, posters? posters on, yeah. Yeah. Another idea could be to pair maybe an upper level class with the uh, 1010, okay, and they can maybe uh, somehow uh, act as their you know, study buddies or something and give them advice about managing their time or study skills. Or simply, I mean, uh, another thing that I thought of is to have some of my students shadow different members of the AUC community. Maybe spend three hours uh, in a certain week with a cleaner, or a gardener, or a, a, a librarian, or your, your faculty while they're having office hours and facing all the, the problems. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, I haven't thought out the details yet, but I think it could be a very, maybe then advocate one of the arguments of that member and the community he or she represents on campus. And I'm going to do Yes, I was going to say that's a really excellent Fantastic. Idea. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago, I think when we first moved to this campus, I uh, had a very small CDF exercise in the normal office. And their job was to interview very old uh, janitors and people, workers, who were left behind on the old campus. Mm -hmm. And then to write out their story, you know, how they feel, and you know, what, what the university has given them, what they've given the university, mm -hmm. to write it out in, in short, like two or three page kind of story in the voice of the worker, mm -hmm. so it was the I voice. <coughs> and then I compiled it together and gave it to um, human resources HR. I don't know what they did, but it would have been a very nice you're expanding it. You're saying not just the workers, but you know, the campus voices, the librarian, the faculty. We need a website. It's also creating a sense of community. Yeah. 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 Yeah
students struggle with seeing the significance of some spaces. We but, must um, give you but, but, to, to, uh, to share with us the challenges you Well, you one of the real challenges yeah. initially was that um, many, many families did not want their, their kids traveling mm -hmm. in Cairo at all. Mm -hmm. And so then I opened it up to AUC as well. But one of the yeah one of the real challenges is like with the student that noticed that he had that in his notes, but he didn't think it was significant at all. He didn't see any significance to what happened. He was just jotting down details. So he gets right down what he saw, but he had a terrible time reflecting on any of the value. He was shocked when I said, "That's fascinating. And this seems really important. What else did you notice with the people?" But you know, it was at a certain point, I'm like, oh wow, it was a very underutilized observation, though it did come out of him in his paper. It could have been the core observation he was making between the ads and the mobile phone, the shop, and the website, and how they target customers. He couldn't make that leap. Oh, so. yes. yeah. um, I mean, this is from a CEO perspective. There's a necessity. When we go off to use community resources, when we do it through an organization that is licensed to work in the community, okay? I, I'm afraid to send out students into the community to just talk to people because they are not supposed to collect information in the community. It's very dangerous, especially now, okay? And that's why uh, in the CDL program, you have to work with an organization because AUC is not licensed to work with people in the community, nor are students as individuals, okay? But the organization is. So we work through them, we partner with them, and then they put us in touch with whoever the beneficiaries in the community are. Okay, so that's just a kind of advice so that's a, that's a very good piece of advice. So even if we're planning to do some kind of primary research with students off campus, we should contact the CDL office to yes. see what parameters. Yes, and if they're doing research, that's, a, that's something too, because they have to go through something called CAPNES, okay? They have to have permission to do research in the community. It's very important and it's dangerous after my experience on this part of the East. And I was investigated for six hours, not to be allowed to call my lawyer, my parents, and nothing. When you were a student? You were a student? No, 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 as a teacher. Oh. Here I was doing some other research and did not take with the, with the Danish uh, institution. And we did not take permission. And we thought that we could simply ask the people in the street just like that because it was actually we not really start. We were just looking around to see where should we start. And then they spotted us in five minutes. We were there in the beginning of the process. And um, the only thing that got the guy out that his embassy, um, he was able to contact the embassy. And then I, they contacted the, the radio and TV thing. And they have air clearance. So it means that I'm, I'm authorized for whatever. But it was really, really serious. Yeah. And on campus, also, we have the institutional review board. So we're having students do research on campus. Well, you guys are. I just I just want um, if I may ask for clarification. So are we saying it's okay to send students out to do observation, but they can't engage with people in the community at all? Okay. Would you say it's it's um it's oh, no. <laughs> okay. No, so you're saying even I having them observe is maybe not a good idea. I would say. Yeah. just taking pictures, and they were shot at by the police. 
as they ran. It, this was last year when things were a little bit. But I'm just I'm just saying that the, actually the, the people themselves I think are even more volatile than you know. So I think we have to be careful because there's that you know, and, and nobody trusts anybody anymore. Yeah. One of my 320 groups last they did their own report on creating more pedestrian bridges in Cairo, mm -hmm. and the leader of the group, Shadi was taking photographs of some of the existing pedestrian bridges like that. Uh, yes. Mahdi. Mm -hmm. He was questioned all the time. And Mahdi, he's a rugby player, so he's huge. And he would just dismiss them. If somebody else, they might have... Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Taking them <laughs> for questioning. I mean, even 30 years, I've been here 30 years, and even school that had come 30 years ago, lots of people said, why? Why are you taking pictures? It's not part of the sort of ordinary culture. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's got... Our cameras on their phone, so it's a bit more in the culture, but still, it's, it's, it's like, why do you want to take a picture of that? Right. Mm -hmm. sort of visual illiteracy. Or Just start doing selfies with whatever yes. you find <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> no, but I think this is wonderful advice. So if you're going off campus, I would definitely contact CBL and, and, and get that kind of help. And <coughs> so. I don't know, what, if you, let's say you did it some galleries, and you, were, you said, okay, it's a Malik, you know, it's got dozens. You know, dozen galleries. You go to the Zamalek, you know, the parents wouldn't object too much. Yes. The galleries, you're in the gallery, you're talking to people in the gallery. That's fine. Yes. That's yeah. a different. Different yes. Okay. Yeah, I think you still need to do it through something. I mean, you need to get the permission from campus. The CBL program will help you. I mean, I want to just to expand on what Oscar was saying. Community doesn't necessarily mean low socioeconomic, dangerous community. It could be a, a very posh gallery in Zamalek. Yeah, right. It could be a school, a, a language school. You see, the human resources, resources inviting it, someone to speak to your students. It could be a corporate, uh, you know, like, yeah. But the, the, the whole pedagogy is about I'm doing my work to achieve my learning outcomes, and the product of my work serves something. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to take our students to dangerous places, but they can still utilize community resources. Can I ask a question? This is related to um, the travel writing course I'm teaching. And when I taught it in 2012, we didn't leave campus. They went to places. We didn't go as a group. So I have a group this semester who wants to leave and go as a group somewhere. What would you advise? I mean, I could go to the travel office to try to get a van, and we go to office and stuff like that. Suggested that, or I mean, would you think? Really, can we go with groups from what you're saying? It, it, as it's 17, you know, 15 girls and two guys. Well, um, Louise is organized. Is it uh, safe? Uh, trips yeah. this semester, the usual trips this semester, with faculty. Uh, so if they're on, then she might be a source of advice on this. Yeah, yeah. Or we could just meet. That, well, we can't. Do you that. know that be a good person, person to contact or? about this? Mm -hmm. Who has just recently organized these kind of trips? Doris. Doris. She just organized last semester a very extensive Dubai. trip to Dubai. Yeah, I know because I'm talking about Japan, but I'm just talking You're about Cairo itself. So, yeah. She's going on she the she 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 She's taking them to a farm. Right. This year because she has a course about food. I, I don't remember the exact right. thing. Brett Br Br Comber would be good to ask. Mm. Yes. She, she, mm. she regularly takes them to go. You look like tourists. It would be fine if you look like tourists when you look like a journalist. Yeah. But you know, they're taking photos. Yeah, but, but journalists don't travel in paths. They're they're embedded. And so I think that's I, I, I haven't heard of anybody as a group having a problem. So do I tell the university or I don't have to, we'll just make a plan and you know on the Saturday something. She went to Alexandria. Yeah, I did. Because I think I think if it's organized at the university, isn't there a legal responsibility no. that the yeah, you need to inform the security officers. Okay. Right. Especially if there are Americans in the group. Mm -hmm. Do we not have this protocol that's mm -hmm. Is this do we not have a anywhere on the red site? No. So maybe we need that on our red site. We need a written yeah. yes. 
and maybe an, an updated one for new times. A few semesters ago, I had the plan to remember when I talked to you about CBN and I wanted to take my students. And it was about environment and like effective use of resources, natural resources, like electricity, electricity, well, energy resources. And then I was worried about the safety of the students. And some of them resisted. So we targeted again the AUC community. And uh, again, different groups targeted different segments of the community. Some of them talked to the cleaners and gave them, uh, because they can't read, some of them can't read, maybe uh, uh, they can't, can't understand English, so they gave them a, a, a presentation in Arabic about how to save electricity and water. They also talked to the technicians. And the technicians said, very happy that someone is talking to them and, 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 and teaching them ways of saving electricity and ways of saving water. And they also talked to the students and talked to some faculty. They created a brochure and they uh, first they analyzed what's happening, what, in which ways are the resources wasted. So they noticed, for example, that many faculty leave the lights on when they're not in the office, sometimes overnight. And then they targeted the faculty and they talked to them in the office and presented them with a very nice uh, brochure. Did you tell Mark Raup about this? Mark Raup, his mm -hmm. husband, who's also the director of sustainability at AC. Yes. He would love to hear that. Okay. Interesting. Well, I think we, we pretty much covered the reflection, which is <coughs> challenges and obstacles. So from the Institute and also some of the research that they provided um, on creating more integrated learning experiences, there are a few principles uh, that came out of that that we've kind of talked about throughout the presentation, but we thought we'd share this with you at the very end to, to kind of encourage you to, to plan for using these resources. And one is you have to know the resources. Uh, apparently you have to do a little bit of homework and find out what's available, what's out there, uh, what's the procedure, the process you have to go through to utilize those resources and understand a little bit about the students' needs because the students and their needs in terms of learning is, is going to determine what resources you utilize as well. Um, and as early as you can plan, and a lot of these resources come suddenly, you have to quickly make plans um, to use them or not. But if you can and you know about resources like your read every spring at home, so you can you can plan in advance, try to, to select and plan carefully. Um, the activities, as I think Amani and I were talking about and mentioned, they should actually be serving a purpose. They shouldn't be reinforcing the outcome. They shouldn't be just an activity for the sake of an activity. They have to accomplish something. And also in emphasizing that integrative learning experience so that they're not just in the chair where they're, where they're not learning. They're actually out doing something. Uh, again, getting them involved in, in activities so that different learners are going to uh, engage differently. And this we've mentioned also before, reflection, action, reflection, which is a really good formula. Anytime you assign an activity or an assignment uh, uh, related to uh, utilizing some of the campus or community resources, reflecting on why we're doing this so that they know why we're going out to, to, to have a certain action. You don't just, just go do this. Um, after they complete the action, have, like what you were talking about, a reflection on those activities so that they kind of connect what they're doing with the purpose. And finally, <laughs> expect the worst. <laughs> no, no, expect surprises and be flexible. Sometimes what you intend for them to get from that activity or, or resource, they don't always get what you want them to get, but it's okay. Sometimes you get something else and it's just as wonderful. Um, so just be flexible and, and expect surprises and be willing to try new things. Um, but of course, use all the resources to know how to, how to do it well. And that's, this, these are our references. I'm trying to be responsible here. And uh, thank you very much for the. I noticed your pictures. That, uh, you were this was this was well. This was all Sanat. She was being very responsible sourcing your This was this was all Sanat. We said, well, if, Tim, if Tim is there, uh, <laughs> we have Tim is not there. We'll be okay. No, we're trying to make an effort ever since he's been mentioning this for the last couple of years. And he, even in my presentations to my class, I've been trying to remember to put some kind of. He just taught us something very interesting because I had a photo I've taken myself and I did not reference it. He said I had to mention that I'm the one who took the photo. Yeah, you just put source and your name. And my name. So that if anybody said, well, where did that come from, then that's, that's the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, background. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? You have to reference the background music? Oh, oh how interesting. I didn't know that. That is no escape. Sorry. She, she said that.
you have to reference background music. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to be right? Always cite. Always cite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for all of your wonderful ideas. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>